All right, guys, we're back with another video. You already know. Let's see where we're going to go today. Yesterday, last video, it was UK, I think it was. Yeah, it was the United States. Not United States, United Kingdom. Bruh. Um, she got school here. <coughs> Hotel. Let's do Brunei. I never heard about that, yo. Let's check this out, yo. Spooky, nightmare, mild. <laughs> Y'all go to nightmare, dog. Let's check it out. Like he in camp. Got another, got another camp you want to hear, boys? All right. I was going to get right into it, yo. So let's go. What I am about to relate is a true account. It happened to me in 1991. I can't remember the month exactly, but I was still serving my full time NS. My appointment by training as an infantry section leader. Okay, so these guys in the military and they're deployed in a military camp. That's what I'm getting here, which makes me a corporal. These days, this rank is called third sergeant. The unit I was serving in was two, sir. It was the first evening of the battalion. Bad, I, I'm sorry if I botched that exercise. Most of the unit was outfield for exercise in the Bruneian jungles. Bruneian is famous for its dense rainforest. The treetops are so high that they effectively cut off any moonlight, making it pitch black after dark. Damn. I was delegated to stay in camp with some of the Califair, i.e., and see those guys with medical sick leave. So I'm guessing IE is like, I don't know. If you guys know all this, it's just like military talk, I suppose. That's what it sounds like. The only other NCO specialist with me was another corporal. Let's call him Corporal C, and I'll be Corporal B. That makes sense. Okay. Lacoon Camp is rumored to be built over cheap land. In this case, it was supposedly used to be a Muslim burial ground. During our nightly RO routine order, order. <laughs> Why do I sound that way? <laughs> Read out by that day's duty officer. He reminded us that if we needed to relieve ourselves, i.e., urinate or shit, we should only do it in the toilet. For those of you who have not been in Lacoon Camp, the barracks are built long, almost entirely wooden except for the tin roofs. They are designed with two exit points on either end where there should be windows. Instead, it is just window frame without any covered doors or shutters. Rain would be prevented by the fact that an extra roof extends only lo really low. The barrack is built a few feet off the ground. It was about the late afternoon. Me and some of the men were bored and you know what happens with idle minds. We began to think of crazy things to pass the time. Now the other NCO, Corporal C, is, is a much stricter person than I am. I'm the type more likely to dish out canteen breaks as opposed to Corporal C, making the men help him clean the extra weapons. Needless to say, this made him less in favor amongst the men. Damn, son. The hours went by. And soon it was dusk, the blue hour when the skies during dark cloudy and blue turn skies. Yeah, I don't know why it's a D there, but skies turn dark cloudy and blue. The yellow lamppost were already turned on by then. I was in the barrack doing my own admin and I felt the urge to pee. So I walked down the wooden steps into the grass clearing by the side of the barracks. There were some men. Playing hide and seek. Yes, you heard me right. 18, 20 year olds behaving like boys still playing this game. Haha. <laughs> I felt lazy and decided to just walk towards the perimeter fence. The fence separates the jungle and the bunk. Standing by the fence, I unbuttoned my fly and went the ground and wet the ground, letting out a satisfying uh, to myself. My field of vision was trained on the grass where my pee was erected at. It was then that I noticed a shadow. It looked like a man with both arms up over head ready to sneak towards me. 
Give me a shock. Thinking I was a smarter guy discovered this person sneaking towards me. I quickly turned around to say boo to whoever this person was. But there was nobody behind me. Hmm. I thought to myself, how strange this is. I turned back, forward, and buttoned up my fly and walked back towards the barracks. I brushed this off as a trick of the mind. Although I couldn't help noticing the impossibility of the shadow, it couldn't have been the street lamp simply because it could not create a shadow where I saw it. I brushed this off as a trick of the mind. <coughs> Damn, son. Soon, it was the time to lights off, so all the men were accounted for, and we went to our double-decker beds to sleep. My bed was just next to the wall, nearest to the main door. And I slept with my feet facing the window, only the montunuous sound of the ceiling fan at high speed could be heard now. Heard now, Creaking as well with every revolution. Soon, I drifted to sleep, but it was not going to be a peaceful sleep for me. Uh, excuse me. Okay, let's go. To my best recollection, I was asleep as I knew it, but suddenly I felt my body envelope in a shivering chill. My ears felt like there was wind blowing, sounding like the rush of air when you ride your bicycle down at high speed. I tried opening my eyes, but I couldn't. I tried moving my limbs, but I was paralyzed. I felt like an Egyptian mummy. My arms were stuck. My ears, I felt the silent terror. Where was no, my arms were stuck straight on both sides of my body, and my legs lay straight. I felt awake and aware, and all the while wind blowing in my ears, I felt a silent terror like I never felt before. What, I was, happened, what was happening to me? Help, help, but no voice came forward. In my desperation, I started reciting a prayer. Being Catholic, I started praying, Our Father and Hail Mary. Imagine the expression on my face as in someone muttering the prayers, Horridly, with eyes tightly closed as if afraid of what was before me. I must have prayed for what lasted like 10 minutes before I felt the prayers working. Slowly, I felt the wind leaving me. It seemed to leave through my head as I felt my body slowly able to move and the blowing sound on my ears just left. Like somebody just pressed stop. I opened my eyes and sat up. The feeling of fear had left me. It must have been the prayers I felt at peace and very brave. Brave enough to scan the bunk around me. It was still dark except for some light coming through the window. But bright enough that I could see the men were asleep. Damn, that's crazy, yo. <clears throat> Post analyst. I shared my incident to some close friends when they came back from the exercise. No one could give me a conclusive answer on what happened. I did get reminded that the camp was built over a former Muslim cemetery and that I should have gone to the toilet to pee. Maybe I offended the Muslim spirits when I peed on the fence without saying excuse me or sorry. Is Lukin camp haunted? I read on other threads here that, that what I experienced could have been a condition called sleep paralysis. That's what I was thinking too. If so, can anyone share if they too also heard the sound of rushing wind in the ears it also sounded like someone was blowing air into your ears at close range. Since that incident, I have encountered similar experiences twice in my home. Damn, it followed him. See, guys, when you're told instructions, especially if they're, you know, you're close to like a cemetery or whatever, man, you best follow those instructions, bro. Because you don't disrespect the dead, dog. All right. Hope you guys enjoyed that. That was a longer one than usual. I kind of liked it. So smash the like button. Subscribe if you're new. And I'll see you guys shortly.